Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Ravel Stearman Aerobatic Biplane in 148 scale, its model kit number 85-5269. Built in the 30s, over 8,000 of these units were made, and you can still find them at small airports all over the place. This is a reissue of kit number 5264, and it's recommended for ages 12 and up. It has a piece count of 67, and the kit's contents are a couple of bags of sprues, uh, the fuselage, and one with clear parts, a great looking decal sheet, and a six page instruction sheet. Now, Ravel has produced a nice kit with this one with uh, beautiful decals and easy to follow instructions. The engine detail is, is really good. It's uh, nicely molded in six pieces. And even though it's not an extensive parts count, you get uh, a really good model here for the price. Um, a novice builder could also build this, uh, as well as uh, the advanced builder, uh, making it a base for further construction and detailing. Finished dimensions of the kit are about 6 and an eighth inches long, 4 inches high, and 8 and 3 sixteenth inch wingspan. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But, as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue, but other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. Grab these parts out of the kit to start building the frame rails. And notice uh, that uh, you've got two seats involved here too which will be installed along with them. We'll use these parts to assemble the side controls and front brace for the inner cage. Decals 38 and 39 are the first decals you'll add to the kit and they, they go on the control panels you see here with the arrows showing. and then. You can use the side rails painted uh, interior green and then add the control sticks to it uh, that you see here. And I use uh, white, black, and red uh, to highlight the knobs and just to steal uh, looking rods for the control sticks. Now you can add the cross members and the other side of the frame rails. And here you can see the completed inner frame with an arrow showing the foot pedals. Uh, it's nice detail and it fits well. And notice there are six little mounting tabs on the outside of the completed frame. These are going to get it uh, positioned for the fuselage. Pull out the fuselage halves and do some good test fitting before you try to glue them together. Now the outer skin here and the firewall and fire extinguisher will be needed. So paint the firewall interior green and at this point paint the inner fuselage. Uh, unlike uh, the interior green of the cage, it's done in a flat white. So let it dry and paint the fire extinguisher wet red. With the inner sides of the frame dried, um, mount the fire extinguisher there on the left side. And then note the, um, the yellow and red arrows pointing to the framework. Those are the tabs and they correspond to the black and yellow arrows on the right side fuselage where we'll glue the frame to the fuselage. The red in arrows uh, here indicate the glue points on the fuselage halves uh, where you'll install the framework uh, for the interior. With the glue points uh, in place now, um, assemble the fuselage halves uh, to the frame with the tabs and sockets. It's a good design and if you look here you'll see that everything fits flush like the frame rails to the top of the fuselage. Pressing the uh, fuselage halves against the frame, you'll see that the front end here uh, notches are very well lined up and they're nice and tight fit. Also, the uh, seam that uh, appears after you get the fuselage halves together is very minimal, so uh, it fits very well. You can see I had detailed the seat belts with a little uh, paint and the controls are mounted into the frame um, for the back seat where the pilot sits. 
get these pieces out to assemble the engine mounting frame and um, paint them interior green and attach them to the firewall uh, that's already been installed. It's straightforward and the mounting holes are, are already there. But note that the round mount has four legs. Two are shorter than the others. So the long ones go to the bottom and the shorter ones are on top. Here the framework is installed along with the muffler and the support. And notice that uh, from the arrows here, the red arrow uh, points towards the shorter sticks uh, that are on our mounting rods that are on top and then the black arrow to the longer ones on the bottom. Grab these parts for the engine and prop and paint the cylinders flat black and the front of the engine a steel color. And the, uh, the prop and the uh, spacer there will be used to uh, trap them uh, into the engine. You can paint the prop uh, aluminum with a steel hub, but we won't be installing that until after we paint the, um, the front cowling a dark red to match the decals. With the front lip of the engine cowl added here, um, you can see that um, the uh, prop has been put into place and the uh, spacer, uh, retaining spacer, is assembled behind the engine to keep the whole thing together. Now we're going to add the instrument decals to the gauge clusters here. We'll start on the turtle deck next, and that houses the gauges for both the pilot and the co-pilot. I have the turtle deck and both gauge clusters here and you can see I flipped them over to show you that how they mount from underneath. It's a straightforward tab that slips into the two tabs on the deck uh, marked with red arrows in the next picture so you can see how it should look. They're almost self-aligning. Now test fit the turtle deck to the lower frame and get it ready to glue and then use a little glue on each side of the deck and it gives you a ridge for the inside of the main fuselage and you see the red tabs there, they make sure that the turtle deck stays in alignment. You can see there's a slight gap where the turtle neck is joined here. You'll need to fill that later on with some filler. Attach the intake scoop to the port or left side on the front half of the engine cowl and note that the scoop faces forward, the inlet that is. Next, glue the two halves together and let it dry. Get the parts for the lower fuselage to attach them to the lower half of the cowl subassembly. Then test fit the cowl and the lower fuselage on the main fuselage bottom to get a good fit. Once you've got that done, glue the front cowl on. You can see here that um, putting the cowl on in place leaves a little gap at the top. Uh, the underside fits nicely, but also the, you know, the turtle deck will have a seam, but we'll have to address those with filler. I used some water-based putty here to fill the gap. Then I wiped away any excess with a damp tissue before it dries. That saves sanding time later. Now gather the rudder and the elevator uh, controls. Uh, and notice that the copyright script is molded in here. And that will need to be removed uh, before you, know, you finish your plane off. Now assemble these pieces into place. But uh, a word of caution on the rudder control there. Glue the uh, rudder control just uh, to the area just in front of the rear wheel and then put the rudder on. Um, you can do it all before it dries using a little slow setting glue. Uh, that will give you time to get it all aligned. I mark those areas here with black and red arrows. After you've got your gaps puttied, um, fill the cockpit area there so that no paint gets in there later on from overspray. Now grab all the body color parts and make sure that you look for any obvious defects there uh, along with the body of course and the wheel pants to be painted. I painted my model uh, with a light color. It's a Krylon white primer um, and I followed that up with some semi matte clear. And notice that the wheel pants there are only tacked together just a small dab of glue so that they could be painted as an assembly. Let these all dry before handling. Now we'll work on the wheels. So this consists of four parts to complete and the wheels were painted uh, Tamiya rubber black and a Tamiya aluminum for the hubs and then make them uh, to make them fit properly use the back of the inner wheel pants and mount them to the lower landing axle. I painted my axles aluminum uh, per the instructions but now slip the uh, cowl over the hub and line it up with the guide pin then slip on the wheel and the hub and glue them into place. 
and then add the uh, other wheel pan and do the same thing. With the body and wings dry, uh, I like to decal them here because it's much harder after the wings are installed. So I decal most everything except for the uh, wing walk area that's black and the name of the plane. Uh, and as the build progresses, you'll see the decals are already applied. So use a couple of spots to tack the lower wing into position for an idea of your fit. With the lower wing tacked into position, you can see how the finished wheels look here and see how they line up and, and look uh, horizontal or perpendicular to the body of the plane. Pull the wing struts and the aileron controls out and paint those red. Now remove the lower wing. Remember we just tacked it into place. And the next step is attaching and aligning the wings and it's most important to be patient. Test fit this, make sure everything lines up and fits into the sockets and gluing points and until the proper position is achieved keep making sure that you make adjustments so that they do. Now glue the lower wing into place and prop it up or use a jig to make sure it stays aligned. Now test fit several times your upper wing to make sure that everything fits properly. Then mount the top wing onto the struts and make sure that everything looks aligned adjusting it as required so use a fairly slow setting glue to make sure that it stays in place but you still have time to adjust it. The wheel pants look great now with the wings attached and make sure this is all well dried before moving on. Now we'll finish up the wings by adding the aileron connectors. Just pull those out and add them into place uh, in the holes and sockets provided. Now pull out the only clear parts for the kit, the wind visors. Now these um, can be painted, the frames uh, the same as body color. And if you use an acrylic paint, you can really let that dry and then just go back in with uh, something like a toothpick and remove uh, any excess or uh, mistakes that were made to give it a nice clean look. There are some uh, gluing guides that are around the body there and you can add the windscreens in place here. And as you can see, they look pretty nice once they're uh, put into position. Now add the rear foot step to the fuselage side. Um, it's painted the same as fuselage color. Now we can add the last of the decals. Um, they're the wing walks. There's a black one for each side and the, uh, the name of the plane for each side too. There's a lot of different materials available for rigging your model. And Easy Line is one of the products you can buy that are, are pretty, uh, pretty successfully used. Uh, I actually used a, a plastic, a black plastic wig, the strands of hair from a wig, and uh, you just stretch it out, glue it with some con or some uh, super glue into place, and and you can use the pictures on the box and the uh, guidelines there and the instructions to rig your kit. Well, there you have it. One of the most successful trainers ever built. This was a pretty straightforward kit with easy to follow instructions. Actually, the parts pretty much just fall together once you make sure that you get the pre-fit issues out of the way. It's a great scale size and it has ample detail and it ends up in a great looking piece that's even better than the standard PT-17s on the market. Now one saving grace was those molded struts for the uh, inner upper wing assembly which makes it much more easy to align those wings. And even though they weren't perfect, uh, many of the parts in the kit still vary are very detailed when finished. Now the copyright placement on the wing was one thing that uh, you know was one detriment but uh, I, I still think this is a great looking easy to build kit um, for actually I think an intermediate uh, modeler could put this together with no issues and once it is done uh, you can put that on the shelf with pride because it really looks great. We hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can also find us on Facebook and at www.rightonreplicas.com. Thanks!